Did you know you can map textures to curves? There is a method for doing it. Let's find out more. I need some textures. I've gone to ambientcg.com. There are plenty of other sites out there and we need something suitable for what we're about to do. So I'm going to make a pipe and a road because I think that best demonstrates. So let's search for road and let's go ahead and grab this one right here. It doesn't really matter as long as we've got something that's road-like and we can download a pack. I don't suggest downloading anything high res at this particular point. There's no real benefit to it. So I'm gonna get the 1K PNG, and this is a pack, as you can see here. It's got multiple different textures. I'll just be using the diffuse one. Let's go up here and search for, and you can pick a different thing if you like, but I'm gonna search for sort of painted metal. I want to see if I can get that sort of rusty look. Hey, look at that. Uh, lots to pick from. I quite like this green one. And so I'm gonna go, go ahead, click that and download that. And you can work with your own textures, absolutely fine. I'll see you back in Blender. Okay, so let's get rid of our friend, the default cube. Once we've gotten rid of him, we're gonna add in a curve and we can add any sort we want. In fact, let's add a circle. It's a closed loop. We can make it into a pipe or a circular road nice and easily. So now that we have our curved object, what we can do is scroll down to the curve properties and go down, let's make this bit a bit wider to the geometry section. We are gonna be mainly focusing this first part with the extrude and then we'll go to depth afterwards. Depth is gonna make it like a torus in this case, good for pipe work. However, we want extrude and I'm going to put in 0.25. I found that value works quite well with an aspect ratio of what you'd expect a road to be. Now, as you can see at the moment, this is not really flat. And what we can do is rotate the curve itself. So we need to go into edit mode. I'm going to open up the properties panel with the N key and this mean tilt. I'm going to set it to at 90 degrees. Now we've got ourselves a curve and that extrusion is from the center of that curve out and we can make it wider or narrower if we want. Okay, so we've got our basic mesh there. It's a still a curve object, but it's now technically in the background a mesh because we've got this surface to it. Now we will need to undo that later on to even out our curve. But what I want to show you first is actually putting the texture on the surface so we can see how it changes. Let's go ahead, add a new material. I'm gonna call this material road. And then I'm gonna to go to the base color slot here, do image texture, and then we need to load in a texture. Now I'm gonna to go to my downloads and we've got painted metal and road. This is the road, don't select this one. <laughs> it's just an example of it. I did that earlier and got very confused. Okay, so we've now got the road texture applied, but we can't see it. So we need to change our viewport settings here. You can either scroll along the top here and go to material preview or rendered. I'm just gonna stick with material preview for now. And this is an interesting one. I, the first time I did this, had a road texture that was aligned a different way. So it actually worked straight away, but we actually need to rotate this. At the moment, this is not correct, it's going across our image. So we're gonna to need to go to the shading workspace. Now I never like how the shading workspace is laid out, however I keep it default and change it every single time. I want a vertical selection instead and I'm gonna get rid of these areas on the side as well. Okay, so we've got our road PNG, let's make this one the 3D viewport, Z, radial menu to bring up, uh, there we go, material preview. So we need to change how this texture is mapped to the surface. So we're gonna use this vector input and we're going to go straight for our mapping node. There we go. And that's gonna allow us to change uh, the location, the rotation and the scale. But we also need texture coordinates coming in here. So I'm gonna type in texture coordinates I'm going to plug it into generated for a moment. We could try normal. There's loads of different options here. We actually want UV because it's unwrapped automatically in the background for us. And we're going to need to manipulate that in a moment. But now what we can do is we can rotate things. And that is pretty cool. You can see it twisting around. So we need to change either the X, Y or Z. I'm going to try 90 degrees. That actually looks pretty good if we bump the scale up. There we go. So what we've done there is we've rotated the texture and then we've scaled it up, which is actually like zooming out on the texture and then repeating it lots. This is designed to be a repeated texture. Now, it being a curved object, it's gonna be a bit more difficult, but I wanna show you a real neat trick to get the right aspect ratio. At the moment, we don't know how stretched the image is. Now, obviously you can stretch an image out if you need to, but if we have a look at our texture node, if we change this from linear to closest, we actually can see 
how wide these pixels are. Now they're obviously curving round as well, so we have to bear that in mind. But what we can now do is we keep adjusting this until they're no longer as uh, rectangular and they're more square. Now this will vary from texture to texture and indeed how far apart your nodes are on your curve. And we'll get to that in a moment. So this particular point, it looks like something around 17, 18, Oh, that's a bit far, actually. Let's try 16. That looks about right. But you can see here, there's a little bit of distortion. These ones are much more squashed. So it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. And there we go, we've got a circular road. Now let's go into edit mode on this and show you one of the problems. If we go ahead, let's go full screen for a moment, grab this control point and drag it out along the X axis, you can see here that the scaling changes as you're going around and the reason for that is because in a curve you have so many segments of the curve in between each control point so what we could do in theory is subdivide the area in the middle and add more in but this doesn't give us a lot of control over that and it dramatically changes the shape i uh, put too many in there but you can get the idea you could manually play with it we don't want to do that. What we want to do is somehow normalize the number of divisions between all of the control points. And what we can do to do that is hop briefly into geometry nodes. OK, let's undo what we've done here. Let's go back to previous and head into the geometry nodes workspace. Again, I prefer a more vertical layout. However, we're only in here for a very brief time. So we've got our geometry coming in. In this case, it's a curve and we need to do something. And I'm gonna resample that curve. So if we go ahead, shift and A, add in under curve, under operations, we can resample the curve. Pop that in and we get this little eye at the top. Input geometry as unsupported type mesh. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Once you add an extrude or a bevel around an object like this, it's now seen as a mesh object. So what we can do is scroll down, go to our curve object. Now, you, if you've typed in a very specific number, you might want to come down to geometry and change it. I know it's 0.25, change it back to zero, suddenly it works. Let's have a look at what's going on here. So now we've got our control points, we can see them, but by resampling the curve, we're actually chopping it all up into same length segments, which is awesome. If we go ahead now and increase the count, you can see that the resolution of the curve just gets higher and higher, but it gets higher and higher evenly. So I'm gonna come in here, I don't know what it needs to be. I'm gonna go 64, it's gonna be a lot of geometry, but that's fine. Now, once that's done, you'd think that we could go ahead and apply the modifier. We can't in edit mode, so we come out, apply. You can't apply on a curve, but what you can do is just right click, convert to mesh, and then immediately convert to a curve again. Now, if we have a look, we can see that there are many, 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 many points all evenly distributed, which is exactly what we want. Now we can go back to the curve settings. We can come back down to our extrude, go 0.25. And I, I thought it was gone for a moment. It's not. It's just vertical again. So what we're going to do is go back into edit mode, change the mean tilt back to 90. And let's go back to our shading workspace for the moment. Let's go to material preview. What's happened there? Well, because we've gone to a curve and a mesh and back again, it's actually lost the association with our material. So we can come in and add the road material back again. And look at that. It's now nice and even all the way around. In fact, that's also solved some of the other issues with it crumpling up in the corner. Now we're still gonna get a little bit of stretching as you can see here, as it goes around the corner, that's primarily the resolution causing that, of course, Here's a question, since it's still a curve, can I apply a subdivision surface modifier to it? I did not know you could do that, but again, it's seen internally as a piece of mesh, even though it's still a curve. And because it's still a curve, we can come in at any point, and I'm gonna turn on proportional editing whilst moving this, we can come in at any point and alter it and reshape it if we need to. Obviously, if we reshape it too much, we're gonna separate these control points from one another, and that might cause distortion again, but you can very easily change that round. Now there is a full geometry nodes way of doing this. I'm not going to do that in this video though, so do subscribe so you'll see that when it comes out, probably later this week. Okay, so we want to move on now from this flat surface that we've managed to nail down to a pipe. I love using curves for pipe work and things like that because you can alter them and move them around. So I'm going to have a look here at my curve. 
I've just added a Bezier curve. We're going to immediately go down to geometry, go to our depth, and again, 0.25. Oh, that's, that's a very chunky pipe. Let's do 0.1. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so this is our starting point. Let's go to our materials, create a new material and call it pipe. And we're going to go down to our base, add in an image texture. And then from here, we're going to go to a mapping node, just like before. And if you have Node Wrangler installed, what we could have done here is Control Shift and T and add a texture in. Uh, but we're almost there at this point. Let's add in a texture coordinate node. And we're gonna go for UV again. So now we need to load in the pipe texture that we had earlier on. So let's go to downloads, painted metal. Here we go, let's pop that on. And it already looks pretty good. And this is one of the things I love about the curves. It just works straight away. You don't have to do any unwrapping or anything along those lines. Okay, so now we just need to squish it into place. So if this was our only bit of pipe, we could come in and probably change the X scale just to push it to the right scaling. And again, like before, I didn't turn it back before, but we could go into closest, zoom in, and we can see how stretched our pixels are. In fact, 3.8 is too much. We need to widen it a little, maybe three. That looks pretty good. Now that's the intended. If you wanted to change that any further, then of course you can do. What happens if we've got a pipe of a different length? Well, just like before, we end up in a a bit of a silly position where the texture will stretch. So we can't adjust it for one place and it automatically work for another. So in that case, what we need to do, just like before, we're going to come into our curve object. Remember the setting you've got for depth. I'm going to remove it and we can do the same as we did before. We can go into geometry nodes, add a new geometry node. Well, we could just select the one we made before. 64 is probably too many points in this case, but this is gonna change the scale that you use later on. So I'm just gonna lower that down to 32 or something along those lines. Let's have a look. 24 maybe? Yeah, 24 looks good to me. What do we need to do? Right click, convert to mesh, right click, convert to curve. So we've gone backwards and forwards there. And then we scroll down to our depth. It was 0.1 before. Now you can see here, and it happened before as well, but the road was flat, so we didn't really see it. Uh, we've got this segmentation, this low poly look. If you don't want that, you can right click and shade smooth. Let's go back to our shading workspace. And as before, we won't have the right material loaded, so we can load that in. Now we've got all of these equidistant points, we can adjust our scale accordingly. And now I'm doing it by eye, but what I'm gonna do is zoom in just like before, just to get that aspect ratio correct. In fact, that's not far from it at all. So I'm gonna leave it at six, that looks good. And again, I'm gonna turn this back because I forgot before uh, to linear interpolation. And of course you can go in and add the other textures that came along with this and end up with a perfect pipe. And if necessary, let's just have a look at the profile here. If you wanted more detail around here, you can change the resolution and bump that up a little, maybe to 16 to make it more circular. Obviously that's adding more geometry to the scene, so you might not want to do that. Okay, excellent, we're all done there. Thank you for joining me on this little excursion into curves and mapping textures to them. I hope this really helps you in your projects. If it does, do share. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start recording the geometry nodes version of this video now, so we're gonna use pure procedural magic for it. If you do want to see that, remember to subscribe. And if you want to watch some more quick tips and tricks, check out this video next.